Masters of the Universe Revolution Episode 1 begins with a voiceover um, over some classic Masters of the Universe art. I couldn't help but notice that He-Man and Skeletor feature prominently. In fact, on the main picture, He-Man is featured twice. Thrice if you include Adam. With Teela relegated to the very furthest of all the action figures. Even Evil Lynn gets her own shot, whereas Teela is basically a background character. Quite different to this show. The modern artwork drags Teela down to the front to battle Beastman, while Andra takes her place at the rear. My last He-Man video got more thumbs up than I have subscribers, so do me a favour, will ya? After Revelation, I totally thought this mysterious character was going to be Teela. Even the voice when they fall sounds feminine. Scareglow can apparently smell fear. Shouldn't Orko be full of it? Or is this the new and improved Orko? Adam wants Scareglow to give back his friends Clamp Champ and Fisto. Fisto I get, but Clamp Champ? More like Clamp Chump. So Adam and Orko need to enter Subternia through the Obsidian Obelisk using Orko's magic. But Buzz Off, Rio Blast and Snout Spout can just drop in through the roof? And these one-liners are terrible. Buzz Off saying, Snout Spout saying I feel a sneeze coming on. And worst of all, Rio blasts the cowboys get the fuse, as in, pew, pew, pew. Is this the best they could come up with? Of course, Ram Man had to turn up to save Fisto. Like an oyster and a pearl, or a guy and a girl, they're a perfect match. If all of Scareglow's minions are leaving, why not let them? Anyway. Here is possibly the worst one-liner in the whole series. Even worse than cowboys getting the pews. King Randor shoots a demon and starts boasting about what a great shot it was. Then follows it up with Not bad for a guy with a crown, eh? What does that even mean? A crown's notorious for hindering your ability to aim? His sheer hubris will be his undoing though as he's immediately set upon by another beastie. But luckily, one of his troops is there to save the day. Ugh, another terrible pun. A man at arms always lends a hand, your highness. Get it? Arm? Hand? My eyes almost rolled out of my head as man at arms is Andra. So she immediately saves the king and gets her ass kissed by Randor himself. She also gets to brag about how she made this ugly looking owl ship, the Cloud Crusher. Hope you love the Cloud Crusher. I made it myself. Sure, and Douglas MacArthur built the USS Missouri. Randor saving He-Man from Scareglow was a bit weird. All he did was blast the giant skeleton with a laser. Couldn't Rio Blast have done that? Or has he seen a therapist and got over his pews? And yes, we get it, show. Randor knows He-Man is Adam. Is this bully bothering you, son? Well done, Adam. That's my boy. Scareglow looks like he's been into the Joker's Titan Serum. I didn't know that Scareglow had the ability to mutate when he obtained the ghosts of Fisto's Fist and Clamp Champ's Clamp. You learn something new every day. Teela finally decides to get off her butt and join the battle, and casts Mage Light. All Scareglow's minions are vaporized. Could have used that ability earlier. So Scareglow's minions are destroyed by light because the only thing the heroes had to do to avoid being disintegrated was cover their eyes. And does, I'm turning on the lights in this place, count as a bad pun or just a statement of fact? He-Man says it was an explosive entrance, but was it really? There was no explosion. Unless you count Orko exploding with glee at the sight of Teela. So again, He-Man and the rest of the crew were struggling and Teela just waltzes in and basically farts and the battle is over. OP much? Teela and Andra seal the entrance to Subternia with a giant padlock dropped from Cloud Crusher and a bit of magic. How about the entrance Adam used? Teela says that He-Man shattered the entrance to Subternia. When did that happen? He just passed through it with Orko's magic. King Randor suddenly feels a bit woozy and passes out. The last thing he sees is He-Man, Teela and his beloved Andra. I was looking up the voices of Too Bad as I thought it was Jason Manzukas. Turns out it's not, but I did find out that Too Bad has two names, 
Tuvar and Badra. So there you go. Write a comment if this is the first time you ever heard they had separate names. This was apparently something introduced in the 2002 cartoon, so it doesn't count. Too bad he's just there so Skeletor can infect him with the motherboard virus. Skeletor is crapping on about how much he loves serving motherboard. So does motherboard report to Hordak for every new person that is turned to serve the Horde? Or only if they're named characters? I'm getting some serious Galactic Empire vibes from the crew of Hordak's ship. Since when has Hordak been a master of alliteration? Masterful, Mistress Motherboard. Make manifest my machination, my right hand. He could have said minion. Again, Keith David's voice is too recognizable. I don't hear Hordak. I hear Keith David. Maybe that's a me problem. Mendor must be a female member of the Choctaw people, as only they possess the glowing double finger healing technique. His existence has only been revealed to us since the release of Marvel's Mega Flop Echo. He actually reminds me a bit of Minsk from Baldur's Gate. So Randor's had this organ failure for weeks, and Mendor says that they still haven't found a cure. Isn't that a bit early to be saying still? Cures are worked on for decades. Tila hasn't been asked to heal Randor yet, and when she tries, he refuses it. So why bother wasting Mendor's time spending weeks looking for a cure? They just combined magic and technology to defeat the forces of hell itself, but a little bit of organ failure stops them dead in their tracks. This is the kind of terrible writing that lets you know that they just need him to die for their glorious plot to take effect. Randor asks to be alone with his family and they all head to the exit. Then Adam looks up and Teela is holding his hand. We just saw her leave. Or was this her showing off her magic? Yep, I can totally teleport. Uh, yep, I could save your dad too. Teela is trying to recreate Preternia, or Eternia's version of heaven. Orko asks, why don't we ask the sorceress for help? Teela says that I am the sorceress now, and I can't go running to mother whenever I need help. First, if your mother is still around, doesn't that make her the sorceress still? Second, if this is a massive issue that there's no heaven, wouldn't you ask for whatever help you could get? How come Randor doesn't mention Adora when he's on his deathbed? Especially as he's thanking Marlena for giving him their son. I'm not a huge fan of how this show just skips over the fact that Randor thought his son was a lazy layabout, and how he should be more like He-Man. Now it's, I've always been proud of you. I'd like to explore the change of their relationship. Wow. So the old sorceress Tila Na is now trapped in the basement of Castle Grayskull for all eternity with no powers, even though she can make images of staffs appear out of thin air. That seems like a power. Meanwhile, Teela for some reason gets to come and go whenever she feels like it. Just make up special rules for her. Was that ever explained? Like she was born from a father from another dimension so her soul is not trapped or something? Anything? They have to get three magical staffs. Zor, Kar and Havoc. They already have Zor and Skeletor has Havoc. Orko even admits that Dark Smoke is scarier than even Subturnia. So he was scared. Why didn't Scareglow smell him? Come on, show. For some reason, Randor is telling Adam that he can't be Adam and He-Man. Why? Because the king can't go off adventuring? Is that all He-Man does, adventuring? I thought he was going off to benefit the people of Eternos. Not just for fun, because King Randor himself just went off to an adventure to Subturnia. Make up your mind. So Randor on his deathbed lists off losing friends, family, and even a brother. A, that's still family. B, what about Adora? And yet I die a luckier man than most. Yeah, you were the king. Oh, not that? Simply because he was Marlena's husband which I'm pretty sure he was only because he was the king. She wouldn't marry some random alien, only a Randor alien. Adam now has to give a speech at King Randor's funeral to a bunch of furries. Adam's speech makes him come off as an ungrateful little so-and-so. I wanted a bike, so he made me one, and it was garbage, so I refused to ride it. Could have at least said he cherished it because he knew how much effort his dad put into it. Queen Marlena acting like it's a touching story. No, it's not. 
it's horrible. Adam says he'll never be half the man Randor was, to which Kaldor yells, then don't accept it. My ears pricked up when I heard that voice, as I knew I'd heard it many times before. It took me a while, but eventually I realised it was old Billy Shatner. The credits popping up probably helped. Thus ends episode 1 of Masters of the Universe Revolution. I can't give this anything more than a 4 out of 10. My memory of He-Man was soured by the bad taste that Revelations left in my mouth. And this episode just served to bring back too many bad memories. The animation is still very good. Maybe a couple of scenes where the lack of animated elements became too noticeable. However, I really wish they could use the old school models, but I guess that's a licensing issue. They would have to pay the original artists for their designs. The voice acting is great. Maybe with the exception of Chris Wood as He-Man. It seems like a bit of a strain for him to get that booming voice. Also, Keith David and Mark Hamill are, well, Keith David and Mark Hamill. It doesn't help that its continuation of the plot is dredging up old plot lines. Rather than introducing new adventures. Kaldor? We've already seen that play out. Hordak? Been there, done that. They really missed an opportunity to explore the changed relationships between Adam and all of his friends and family after the revelation of his true identity. Now we're left with a He-Man that has lost the entire point of what made him relatable. He had to hide his identity to protect his loved ones at the cost of becoming isolated from them. Just as Superman did, only in reverse. Skeletor does not work as a sniveling minion. He needs to be in charge of his goon squad and to be free to come up with his own harebrained schemes. The ridiculous one-liners really sapped any sense of tension out of these episodes and made them seem like the glorified toy commercials that the 80s episodes were supposed to be. Plot holes and plot contrivances serve to drive this story in directions it has no business being in. Killing Rando in the first episode? Get out of my sight. So we're left with a world where Adam has to contemplate no longer being He-Man for some nonsensical reason, while Teela has to go off and collect more powers. Nothing has changed from Revelation, and there's no reason to hold any hope for the rest of the season. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time, and have a good one.